This is Dr. Richard Fleming. Today is Friday, the 26th of February, 2021. Someone asked me earlier today if I would speak to a topic that they'd heard considerable controversy about regarding none other than SARS-CoV-2, the virus that is well known for causing the clinical disease COVID-19. The question that they asked of me was, is there a problem with asymptomatic carriers spreading the virus? And the answer is, we don't know. You would think that after more than a year and all the conversations that have gone on, somebody might have looked at the information. So let's break this down into the important topics that you need to realize. To begin with, asymptomatic carriers, kind of a garbage can term it has a lot in the garbage can and you have to look at it to determine what pieces belong to which category. The term asymptomatic should be something that all of you are familiar with. It's the absence of symptoms. When you go in and see your doctor, you come in and one of the first things I ask is, what can I do for you? And why did you come to see me? What you're going to do hopefully is provide to me your set of symptoms, the things going on for you that you notice are out of the ordinary, things that have caused you to seek medical attention. You don't come to me or any other doctor because you want to pass the time of day or you have nothing better to do or that you want to bill. You come because you think that you need medical attention. That's what we're there for. That's what we do as doctors. You come in with a set of symptoms that could be almost anything. And between that and the signs or physical examination of you and any testing that goes on, we make a decision about what types of health problems you might have and what type of treatment should be best for you. Somebody who's asymptomatic won't have any symptoms, so they probably won't be going in to see their doctor. Today, unfortunately, with all the pan culturing nasal swabs and oral swabs for PCR testing, we've come across a new problem. Somebody has a positive test that shows that they have SARS-CoV-2, the virus, in their nose or their mouth, their nasal or oral pharynx. And now they want to know what to do about it. And the answer is that if you're symptom asymptomatic, it's hard to make you better than having no symptoms. We never quarantined the healthy population before and pan cultured anybody. So this is all a new frontier for all of us. And uh, as you can see, it's rather confusing because we don't treat healthy people and we don't treat people that are asymptomatic. So the question is, why are you asymptomatic? Well, you might not have the virus. Even if you swab positive for SARS-CoV-2 with a PCR test, it doesn't mean that what was swabbed out of your nose or your throat was alive. And it doesn't tell you how infective it is. It doesn't tell you whether you're going to have symptoms down the line, whether you're going to have mild symptoms or runny nose or muscle aches and pains, what we call myalgias, or slightly elevated temperatures, your body responds to the virus and you get better. We don't know if you're going to become one of the people that become ill with full-blown COVID-19 and require treatments, treatments that, while they're available, not everybody's getting an opportunity to see because of all the misinformation about treatments. Nonetheless, if you're asymptomatic and you have a positive PCR test, there's really not much more to do except to watch and observe and wait to see if you develop symptoms. If you do develop symptoms, see your doctor, contact somebody to get treatment so that you don't need to suffer the ramifications of a virus that can be easily treated. <clears throat> you could be asymptomatic because you are infected with SARS-CoV-2 and the spike protein has crossed your blood brain barrier and interfered with your brain's perception of just how little oxygen you have. We call that hypoxemia, low oxygen. And unfortunately, that's is one of the reasons why people end up going to the hospital late because they're simply unaware that they have too little oxygen. Now, the reality is you should also be having those other symptoms, the runny nose, the headaches, the fevers, the chills, the muscle aches and pains, perhaps this loss of sense of smell, 
<clears throat> all signs that something's going on, all signs that your body is trying to tell you, pay attention. The real reason why asymptomatic carriers is a topic is it's being used to direct behaviors of people and primarily social distance individuals and be used as an argument for wearing masks. Now, I've written several books on SARS-CoV-2 and you can find them on amazon.com. In an Unmasking COVID Part 1, we talk about when masks may or may not be necessary. The truth of the matter is all of the videos that you've seen looking at SARS-CoV-2 on water droplets has to do with somebody sneezing or coughing. You see those nice, beautiful puffs of air and the distance that the virus travels on the water droplets that comes with a cough or sneeze. The, the distance of six feet is really an arbitrary number because on any given day, it can be more than six feet or less than six feet if you're coughing or sneezing. But here's the point. If you're coughing or sneezing and you're coughing and sneezing on someone, don't do that. Don't do that whether you have SARS-CoV-2 or some other virus or influenza A or influenza B. Just don't do it. There's nothing polite about it and spreading an infection from one person to another isn't the best part of humanity. So the benefit of really wearing a mask is to stop those coughs and sneezes with water droplets coming out. <clears throat> but you can do the same thing by covering your mouth with your elbow or a handkerchief or whatever you learned at whatever uh, generation that you were raised in. And if you cough or sneeze on something, clean it up. Get something that cleans it up. Clorox wipe or something or some type of spray. Do what your mom and dad taught you to do. And if you're a teenager listening to this or an elementary school student, <laughs> go talk to your mom and dad. They should be giving you this lesson. Don't cough on other people. Don't sneeze on other people. And we've all seen the people that look like they're eating and talking to other people and they're spewing out Lord knows what at any point in time. Clearly, step back people. <clears throat> but what we're not seeing is information on asymptomatic cures who are not coughing and sneezing. And just before doing this video, just to make certain that something didn't get by, I did a literature search and it came back with, well, the question was, how far does the SARS-CoV-2 virus spread in somebody who's not coughing or sneezing? And it came up with zero results. Nobody's published a paper on it. Nobody has apparently done research. If you're listening to this and you've done research on it, and you're trying to get published, please let us know. We'd love to know what your answer is. Obviously, there's not money in it for pharmaceutical industry or for vaccinations, but there is common sense in it. In fact, I once heard someone say the other day that the reason why they didn't wear a mask when they weren't coughing and sneezing and were in polite company with people was because they had CS, common sense. The answer to the question is we have no data that shows that asymptomatic carriers or asymptomatic individuals so a carrier would be somebody who does have the virus and an asymptomatic individual would be somebody who doesn't have the virus. We have no data, no information, no published research to show that there is a distance that needs to be held out or benefit to masking or staying at home. <clears throat> we know that if you're coughing or sneezing, you would benefit from wearing a mask but you would probably also benefit from staying home and not coughing and sneezing at other people. And by the way, you can't become an asymptomatic carrier without having been coughed or sneezed upon by somebody who has SARS-CoV-2. So if you have a question and you've been around somebody who is coughing and sneezing on you and they tested positive for SARS-CoV-2, you might want to pay the same attention to that that we've been paying to other viruses over the years. Don't go out and spread it. This virus doesn't spread by magic. It spreads by people who are ill, spreading it to other people who 
who are not. This is Dr. Richard Fleming. Today is Friday, the 26th of February, 2021. 